Good morning, Kyoto, Japan. Tour Cruz here, checking in with another cycling video. So we've been cycling here in Kyoto for the last few days. This is our very first sort of folding bike travel experience. And in today's video, I kind of wanted to wrap up our thoughts on this experience since it's our last day uh, finishing up this trip. We're going to be heading back home. And I wanted to talk about my initial thoughts with our experience so far. So what it's been like traveling with folding bikes and using them to cycle around, using them to go by train and yeah, using them to get around to different locations. So we started our trip. You can check out our full playlist on this series if you want. We started our trip by taking the Shinkansen bullet train from Nagoya over to the east side of Lake Biwa and we cycled down along that coast to get to Kyoto. And also we're planning to be traveling full time for a while. And so our initial thought was we were going to get some folding bikes and use these bikes to do that. So, but we never really had the, the full experience with traveling and cycling on folding bikes. So that's why I'm really glad we did this practice run. There's a lot we learned and so far, let's talk about some of the good points first. So why folding bikes? The great thing about folding bikes is they fold down. So they get down really small and we can bring them in our hotel room. So Japan is really strict <laughs> with that here. Um, you're not really allowed to bring like road bikes or full size bikes into your hotel room unless you take off the wheels, put it in a bag. It's called a Rinko bag. And it's the same thing with the trains. Like you can't bring your bikes on the trains unless you fold it down into a bag. So uh, Japan is more strict about this compared to other countries. It might be more lenient, but um, at least if you're traveling by bike in Japan, the folding bike is by far the way easier method. So that's one reason why we did that. Also, we're going to be traveling between different countries. So we need to be able to fly with the bike and the bigger the bike, the bigger the box you need. And we don't want to have to lug around a, a giant box everywhere. So we decided we wanted to go with the smallest box possible, which is actually a plastic bag mixed with some cardboard. Um, but when we're tra traveling domestically, we don't need the cardboard box. We just put it in the bag. We'll be showing you guys that here. We're about to arrive at Kyoto Station. So we'll show you guys the whole process. I'm um, getting it folded down. For the most part, things went pretty close to as I was imagining it. Um, but there were some negative things that we weren't exactly ready for. And one of those was just like the inconvenience and like of moving the bike. Like it was a little bit harder than I thought, especially for longer distances. So the folding bikes, they actually, well, generally weigh more than the regular road bikes. Like we're used to riding some nice aluminum road bikes, not super light, but decently light, maybe about like eight, nine kilograms. But the folding bikes, the ones that we're on anyway, are about 13 kilograms, maybe 14 kilograms. And we're also loading them down with extra bags and stuff. So it's, it's decent amount of weight and it gets to you after using it for a while. So we sort of went with the half and half approach. We loaded up the bikes half the way, half with a backpack each. And also we had a front bag where we stored some of the luggage. So that's one thing we learned. We definitely want to be able to put more weight on the bike. So we want to get some bigger front bags to go on these bikes. We want to keep that weight off of our shoulders because when we were cycling Lake Biwa, that was our longest stretch. Um, it was fine for like an hour or two, but anything longer than that, it definitely took a toll on our shoulders and it gave us a little bit of a sore back. So that was one big lesson learned is that we don't want to keep too much weight in our backpacks on the longer cycling tours. And we want to put more weight, as much weight as possible on the bike itself. And here we are crossing over into Kyoto Station. <laughs> we gotta go nice and slow here just cause there's a lot of people around. You gotta be really careful because a lot of people uh, <laughs> just going in all different directions. And we want to park as close as possible to the entrance that we'll be entering so we don't have to carry the bikes too far. Actually, this is where we arrived and it was a nice convenient area to fold the bikes. So let's do that here. All right, always nice to take off the heavy backpack. And right now our backpack is loaded as much as possible. So here's Tun chans bike. This is Taro-chan. Taro-chan as in the taro potato, the purple sweet potato. And for my bike, we've got black sesame-chan, kurogoma-chan, 
And this is the front bag we're using. So this bag has been decent. We've been able to put some of our heavier luggage in here, but I have felt that the total space, um, it would be nicer if we could fit a little bit more in here. So right now we only have one of these bags. That's a problem. So we need to get one for Tuanshan. So we can get two bags. And we also maybe want to get a slightly bigger bag just for these longer trips because we're carrying a lot of stuff. We're carrying our luggage. We're ch carrying like spare clothes, spare cameras, everything. And right now, like our bags are really loaded. So let's check out Tunchan's backpack here. Uh, backpack, oh my ne. So let's ask Tunchan her opinion about what she thought about her first bike packing trip on the folding bikes. うん。で、こっちょっと大変だった。うん。足も痛かったね。足は痛かった。腰も痛くて。初めて自分がね、初めてこんな重いバッグを持つ。いつも来る人、自分軽いものだけ。うん。来る人がいつも物、重いものを持
And for me, this is all my equipment. So I got my bag here. This is my backpack. And I also have to carry the bike bag separately. And lastly, with the helmet, we just keep the helmet on our head. It's a lot easier just to keep it there than to strap it onto something and worry about it. Anyway, let's continue on. Let's go get our tickets. So before we enter into the Shinkansen gate area, I just wanted to go check out, this is the main central area of Kyoto Station. We didn't actually come this way when we arrived. Um, but yeah, really beautiful modern station here. And always impressive every time we come here, just how high open the ceiling is here. Very cool. Bunch of different shops here, pretty active. Lots of people out. Our last time here in Kyoto Station for a while. Who knows when we'll come here next. Let's go, we don't wanna be carrying these bags too long. All right, so we just made it onto the train. We had to rush, they were just about to depart, but we had good timing. We didn't wanna wait for the next one. You can see behind us, we've got our bikes conveniently stored. We've got, a, we got the lucky seat at the end of the train. And we also got some goodies for the ride back. So we got some Gogoichi Horai. This is actually a shop from Osaka. Uh, they have some really famous steamed dumplings, butaman, and we get this every time we come over to Kansai, over to Osaka area, so we're getting it in Kyoto as well. And we also got some souvenirs for some of our friends, some of my co-workers. Uh, this is yatsuhashi, so it's a traditional Japanese snack here in Kyoto. And they have different flavors. This one is sweet potato. Um, I haven't tried this one yet, I'm pretty excited about it. This one is black sesame. It's the same name as my bike. I had to get it. Uh, it's one of my favorite flavors. And what else did we get? Uh, this one's kuri, chestnut. My coworker's favorite flavor is chestnut, so I got this one for her. And I got a big box in here for some of my coworkers. And we're going to a Halloween party tonight, so we're bringing that to the Halloween party as our gift. All right. So these are the shumai, and this is the steamed dumplings. Let's open these up. We're pretty hungry. Onakasuite Okay, go. This is the nice thing about traveling by train though, is you have a lot of freedom, you have a lot of flexibility, you don't have to stick to any certain schedule, at least in Japan, because there's so many bullet trains. Um, but we decided we needed to get home quickly, and lots of good food here. All the joys of bike traveling in Japan by train. Okay, very good. And this also comes with some really spicy sauce here. This is really good. Okay. Itadakimasu. All right, we're gonna dig into this and we'll check back in once we arrive. So we just arrived in Nagoya and the weather's actually really nice and I don't feel like carrying these bags all on the subway system to get to our home. We actually live over on the east side of Nagoya, about a 40 minute subway ride away. And yeah, I'd rather just ride the bikes there. So we're gonna open up the bikes and continue on with our ride. Okay, here we go. This is a lot better, feeling a lot lighter. And let's go ahead. We can actually walk through the station here. So let's show you guys that really quick. We're gonna walk to the other side of the station because we need to ride east to go home. So let's go. Oh yeah, Chuenchan's becoming a pro at folding out the bike a lot smoother than before so let's walk through the station we're trying to figure out like the best solution for filming these videos so right now i've strapped my camera onto the backpack strap mount so i have both hands free i need to hold the handlebars though and you can actually bring your bicycle through the station here so some people when it's not busy will actually cycle through here on their mama charities it's a little too busy for us to do that today but yeah, I mean, you can't beat the freedom of traveling by folding bike. Once you get through like all the inconveniences, like it is a little bit heavy when you have to actually carry the bag, but in other countries, like ideally that wouldn't be a problem. We can just roll our bikes onto the train. So our biggest complaint is mainly just when you're traveling in a country like Japan, which is really strict about bringing the bikes on the train. But I think in other countries in Asia and in Europe, they're not so strict about that. You can just roll the bike on and if we can keep our luggage on the bike and roll the bike on the train, then I don't really have any complaints. There was one other situation we were a little bit worried about. When we were in Kyoto, we were cycling to all these different like tourist destinations and 
there were a couple different like restaurants we wanted to stop at, but there's no place to park the bike there. So we had to like look around for some far off place where we could park the bike. And it's a little bit worrying when you park your bike like far away from where you're gonna be. And especially if your bike is of higher value, then you're worried like someone might steal the whole bike itself or even just a piece of the bike. Like if someone just stole the saddle on her bike, like we'd be screwed. So yeah, there's a couple different things that we, we need to work out to create a better system. Like in other countries, it's not quite as safe as it is in Japan. Like we don't have to worry about our bike or parts of our bike getting stolen here. But when we're in Thailand or Vietnam, I'm sure bike theft is a little bit more prevalent. So we can't get too comfortable with that stuff. We gotta be more careful. So we're cycling or walking through here in Nagoya station, going from the west side of the station over here to the east side of the station. And we started our trip on the weekday. So when we first came here, there was no one here. And now it's the weekend and you can just see it's crazy. I think Japan is just about ready to explode with people going out and traveling and doing stuff. Like we've been on these like semi lockdowns and it's mostly like voluntary stuff. Like people would just stay home. They wouldn't go out. And we've managed to get the COVID case numbers like down really low. Uh, Japan's vaccination rate is insane. Like it's still going and they're already like over 70%. I think I haven't checked recently, but like they've already way over past the US. And yeah, COVID cases are down, vaccinations are up. People are ready to go out and be active again. This is my first time here to Nagoya Station like this week in over a year and a half. So pretty exciting. We'll be coming here again next week. We're actually gonna be moving, leaving our apartment, heading to Tokyo. So yeah, next week is gonna be insane because we're actually gonna be moving. So. We have to bring all the luggage we have now, plus everything else that we own in our home, in our apartment. So we have to bring the suitcases and the full cardboard box set up and somehow get to the train station, somehow get to the airport. So that's gonna be a journey, figuring out how to transport all of our stuff. Um, but for the light setup, for what we have now, like this is fairly doable, not a problem, but I am kind of worried about next week when we have to move we're basically putting our entire life into one suitcase, one backpack, and one little bike bag, that little plastic bag. So it's a really scary feeling. But on the other hand, it's really nice to go minimalistic and just have a lot less to worry about and just get down to the bare essentials of what we need. It's just so insane, the number of people here. Like, yeah, we haven't been down here on a weekend in so long. All right, we're free again, back on two wheels. Yeah, this is the best way to get around. So we're going to continue on our ride home. And I think this video is getting pretty long, so we're going to stop this here. But hope you guys enjoyed my rambling, my thoughts about traveling with folding bikes, our experience so far. And again, we'd love to hear any of your suggestions or tips. So if you have experience with bike touring, with folding bikes, we'd love to hear your opinions and your ideas on what we should do to improve our setup. Any other advice you have, we'd love to hear it. Also, we wanna say a special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to your guys' support, we're able to continue filming these ride videos and share our journey with you guys. We really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much. And we'll check in next time here on Tuo Cruise. Make sure to subscribe, stay up to date with all of our cycling adventures here in Japan and moving forward to Thailand, Vietnam, and so on. We hope you join us. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.